Hey guys, Marissa here. Today I am very excited to be bringing you a video that I'm doing in collaboration with April Magazine. April Magazine is an online magazine that seeks to empower East and Southeast Asian women around the world by giving them a voice and helping them share their stories. I've been the primary book contributor at April Magazine for about two years now, and last week I put up an article talking about my 10 most anticipated 2018 releases from Asian female authors. So for this year's anticipated releases video, I thought it would be fun to share five of those books with you guys from the actual article So let's go ahead and get started. I want to talk about these in order of publication So we're gonna be starting off with Brotopia breaking up the boys club of Silicon Valley by Emily Chang This one will be coming out in early February from portfolio books and it seeks to pull back the curtain on Silicon Valley to reveal not only the sexism but also the sexual harassment that women in tech have to deal with almost every single day. I think this will be the perfect nonfiction book to read in the era of the hashtag me too and hashtag times up movements and I think it'll be a really interesting look at sexism in Silicon Valley because Emily Chang promises not to just talk about the bigger more public um, instances of sexism and sexual harassment but to look at all of the little everyday things that women in tech have to go through that maybe don't get as much attention. The book also includes some interviews with the likes of Sheryl Sandberg, Tim Cook, and Marissa Mayer and also promises to offer some actual practical solutions to sexism in tech, um, which I'm very interested in reading. The next one on my list is also coming out in early February, this time from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, and that is The Lost Girls of Camp Forevermore by Kim Fu. This one has been on a lot of anticipated reads lists this year, and from what I understand, it's about a group of five young girls who are all attending this kind of sleepaway summer camp. They have a great time making friendship bracelets, swimming, enjoying the campfire, until one night when they go go on a kayaking trip to a nearby island and get stranded there without any adults. The rest of the book follows these same girls up through womanhood, um, follows how their lives change and how their friendships change, and I believe focuses heavily on how they all see this one moment, this kayak trip gone wrong from every single one of their perspectives. I personally am a huge fan of books that do this, where they take one kind of pivotal moment and then examine it from many different angles and many different perspectives. Um, I think it just really goes to show that although we can all maybe experience what seems to be the same thing, we all look at life a little bit differently, and honestly, I'm just really looking forward to this one. Next up, some exciting fantasy is coming out in 2018, and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This one is coming out in May uh, from Harper Voyager, and I can honestly say that I have not been this excited for a new fantasy series in a very, very long time. Our main character comes from a peasant family in the Rooster Province and surprises everyone when she not only aces the empire-wide um, academic exam, but actually gets into the most elite military academy in the entire empire. Unfortunately, being a poor, dark-skinned girl in a military academy is not easy, and our main character, Rin, finds life getting even more complicated when she discovers that she has the ancient and mythical power to wield shamanism. Like I said, I don't normally get this excited about fantasy, but something about this book uh, just kind of calls to me. It might be that it's kind of based on a uh, kind of mythical Chinese shamanism, which I very much don't know anything about, so I'm really interested to see how that's kind of um, explored and expanded upon. Reading the publisher's copy that is available for this book currently, I was also really intrigued to see that they didn't just highlight the fact that Rin is poor, but also that she is dark-skinned. Colorism is something that is very prevalent in the Asian community uh, that we don't necessarily talk about enough, um, so I'm really intrigued to see how a fantasy book goes about addressing issues like that. And of course I had to throw some Japanese literature on this list, so in 2018 I'm really looking forward to the release of The Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This one is coming out in June from Grove Press and is translated from the Japanese by Ginny Tapley Takemori. The Convenience Store Woman centers around one woman named Keiko who, back when she was in college, took a job at her local convenience store. Now at the time her parents were very excited about this because she was always a kind of awkward child and they were always a little concerned about how she would adjust to the real world. However, 18 years later, Keiko is still working at the same convenience store. She still doesn't have a boyfriend, she still doesn't have that many friends, and she's very aware that although she is very satisfied with her rather repetitive and predictable life, uh, she's not really living up to her parents' 
expectations. Then a rather cynical and bitter young man comes to work at the convenience store and I believe his arrival kind of disrupts uh, Keiko's world and makes her question whether she is actually as content in her lifestyle as she thinks she is. If you are a regular viewer of my videos, this probably doesn't need to be repeated, but if you aren't, I am a massive fan of this kind of slice of life Japanese literature. These aren't books with a lot of action or emphasis on plot, but rather they tend to be really intense character studies of sometimes very awkward or overly normal seeming people and I don't know why but that just really appeals to me. Finally I want to round things off with some historical fiction that's coming out in 2018 and that would be The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin. The Court Dancer is going to be released in August by Pegasus Books and from what I understand is actually based on a true story. The Court Dancer is about an orphaned young woman named Yi Jin who attracts the attention of the Empress and is brought to the Joseon court to serve as one of her um, court court ladies and dancers. During one of her dance performances at court, Yi Jin attracts the attention of a young French diplomat who is visiting Korea for the first time and who falls so madly in love with her that he actually convinces the emperor to give him permission to take Yi Jin back to France with him. In France, Yi Jin discovers a whole new life. Not only is she in a new country with a new language and a new culture, but she finds this freedom that she has never had before. She also meets another Korean student living in France and together they start to translate translate and publish Joseon literature. I'm excited about this book for two reasons. First of all, it's set in a period of Korean history that I know literally nothing about. The second reason I'm really excited about this book is that Kyung Suk Shin is honestly one of the authors that is recommended to me the most. I am happy to say that I finally have one of her books on my list and hopefully this year I can get to it. So those are five of my most anticipated 2018 releases from Asian women. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I talked about 10 in the article. So if you would like to see the full list, check the description box below. I will link the article in the very top line. I would love to know some of the books you guys are anticipating in 2018, so feel free to leave me a comment down below. But otherwise, that is all I have for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye!